match officials mic'd up. Howard Webb reviews Liverpool vs Man City, West Ham vs Aston Villa and other VAR talking points. Plus, Howard Webb analyses why Tomas Sousek's role led to West Ham being denied a late winner against Aston Villa and much more in the latest episode of Match Officials Mic'd Up alongside former Liverpool and Man United striker Michael Owen. In the latest installment of Match Officials Mic'd Up, PGMOL Chief Howard Webb explains why Liverpool were not awarded a penalty late on against Manchester City, why West Ham were denied a late winner against Aston Villa. And more. In full, Webb's analysis of Liverpool's late penalty appeal. Liverpool were not given a penalty by VAR in the final minute of their pulsating 1-1 draw against Manchester City on Super Sunday. In the final minute of the match, Jeremy Doku challenged Alexis Mack Allister in the penalty area as City defended a corner and appeared to catch the Liverpool number 10 in the chest. Referee Michael Oliver waved away the call and VAR Stuart Atwell took a long look at the decision and opted to stick with the on-field call. Howard Webb, this one has split opinion. I think it's one where had the referee given it on the field, it would have been check complete by the VAR. But having not given it, it is also check complete. You can hear Michael Oliver say that the ball is in between. The ball is too low to head. Doku lifts his foot to play the ball and he does make contact on the ball. We know there is some contact on Mac Allister as well so he's not really playing the ball either. I think it would have been check complete either way as he doesn't want to be re-refereeing the game in situations that are not really clear. In this situation, the VR stays out of it and I think that's what we would expect. It's a massive game, so as a referee, you just want clarity and certainty that you're making the right decision. You don't always have sufficient information that you're making the right decision. You need that on big moments in and around the penalty area. You do everything you can to be in the right position. Michael didn't have certainty in this situation, but VAR didn't have any clear and obvious evidence to overturn the on-field decision. It's subjective and so stays out of it. VAR followed the right course in not getting involved. In full, Webb's analysis of West Ham's late disallowed goal. In West Ham's 1-1 draw with Aston Villa. It took five and a half minutes to clear up whether the hosts had scored a late winner. Tomas Sousek thought he had won it for the Hammers in the dying stages of added time, after getting on the end of James Ward-Prowse free kick. But it was ruled out for handball after a lengthy video assistant referee VAR check. Howard Webb. It was quite a complicated sequence as there was quite a lot going on. We see the free kick coming in and we know there is a possible offside. There's also a couple of potential handball offenses. There's one by Tomas Sousek and we know the ball definitely comes off Sousek's hand. But he's not the goal scorer as the ball then hits Jared Bowen on the ground. We see and hear the VAR and AVR going through the sequence. They're trying to find the most definitive aspect of it. They're looking at whether it hits Jared's arm on the floor. If it does, then we know that the goal can't stand. We know that if the ball hits the scorer's arm, even if it is accidental, then the goal has to be disallowed. They're looking at the goal from different angles to see if the ball hits Bowen's arm. I suspect it hits his left arm, but we can't quite get the definitive angle. So they go back to Sousek to see if it comes off his arm, but for Sousek, it has to be a deliberate handball offense or he has made himself bigger in some way. It did take quite a bit of time. Sousek turns his body to knock it onto Bowen, so it is a handball. It's an example of how complicated these sequences can be. In full, Webb's analysis of John McGinn's straight red card. During Aston Villa's 4-0 home defeat by Tottenham, John McGinn was dismissed for a reckless tackle on visiting left-back Destiny Udigi in the 65th minute. Referee Chris Kavanaugh did not require a VAR review and decided to dismiss the Villa captain after witnessing the tackle. Howard Webb, when we try to identify a red card offense, we look at whether a player leaves the ground, does he lunge in two-footed or with a straight leg, does he go over the foot with the studs? It doesn't happen in this situation. But what we do see is John McGinn take a really strong kicking action into the opponent. 
The law only asks us to identify whether the action has excessive force or brutality. This one, I think, clearly does and the officials did as well. The Tottenham players didn't react to the officials in this case, they went straight to John McGinn. They're not trying to influence the referee into showing a red card. They're identifying that it's a brutal action from McGinn. In full, Webb's analysis of Josh Brownhill's red card versus Crystal Palace. During Crystal Palace's 3-0 win over Burnley last month, the game's turning point came in the first half when midfielder Josh Brownhill was sent off. The Eagles dominated possession in the opening period but could not find a breakthrough before Brownhill was shown a straight red card. James Trafford played a ball to Brownhill, who was under pressure from Jefferson Lerma, and he brought down the midfielder when he was through on goal. Howard Webb, this one is a pretty clear situation. Doxo stands for denial of an obvious goal-scoring opportunity. When we analyze this, we look at four elements, was the play moving towards goal? What was the distance from goal? Did the attacking player have possession and control of the ball? And finally, what is the location of the other defenders? Could they interject to prevent that attack? In this situation, we see that all four elements are present and therefore when the foul happens, it's denying a clear goal-scoring opportunity and therefore a red card comes. In this situation, there's a clear shirt pulled by Brownhill, but it doesn't matter that it was deliberate or whether there was an attempt to play the ball. As it's outside the penalty area, so it's always a red card. If we move it into the area, then it wouldn't be a red card if Brownhill was making a genuine attempt to play the ball. It would be a yellow card, but if it is a cynical shirt pull as it is in this case, it would still have to be a red. It's a good decision from the officials. Dot. Thanks for your watching. Don't forget to click the subscribed button and hit the bell icon for more.